Welcome back to Close Up. Frank Edelblue is coming up on two full years at the helm of the New Hampshire Department of Education. And the commissioner is here to help educate us this morning about what's going on in New Hampshire schools. Commissioner, thanks for being here. How are you, Adam? Thanks for having me yeah. on. So uh, you had an op-ed recently, or you wrote something interesting. Self-reflection and a willingness to step out of our comfort zone is what's required to improve our education system. Let's do a little self-reflection to start here. Uh, you were very successful in business, but new to the field of education when you began. What have you learned over these last two years? And have you changed any of the preconceived notions that you, you went into the job with? Well, so, I mean, I've been having a great time, first of all. I don't know if there are any other commissioners in charge of a state agency that gets to have as much fun as I do every single day. Um, whether that is, you know, getting into the classroom and spending time with students who are working on art projects, <clears throat> or maybe a ceramics project or something like that, or getting to go out and see them skiing sometimes in some of the athletic fields, uh, you know, in the schools. Just a really great opportunity for me to be out and spend time with New Hampshire children, New Hampshire families, New Hampshire communities, and really get a sense as to what's going on out there. Um, I've been asked that question before about whether or not, you know, preconceived notions have changed, and I, I have an unusual answer to that, I think. Um, I didn't go in with preconceived notions. I went in with a blank slate, you know, let's learn and listen and observe and see what's going on in our schools. Uh, listen to the people who are on the ground and working with the children and the students in the schools and take all that information in and then process it and try and figure out how I can help the system move forward. So what are some of the big programs you're working on or big ideas you've got going right now? Yeah, so lots of big ideas going on. Uh, just about two weeks ago, I think we launched a platform called, it's called iPlatform for Education. Um, the Department of Education sits on a vast amount of data. Um, that data has been kind of tucked away and difficult for folks to get access to. So we created modern technology, we using modern technology created a platform for people to be able to easily access that and kind of see what's going on in the education system. Um, another program that we launched last week is called Learn Everywhere. Uh, it's called Learn Everywhere New Hampshire. And it's really an innovative program to really come alongside schools and help them achieve really the aspirations that New Hampshire has had for education uh, for many, many years. I think you recall when I was first getting into this job, I referred to myself as the implementation guy. Uh, some people did, took uh, you know, umbers with that and thought, well, what do you mean he's the implementation guy? New Hampshire has been a leader in education for many, many years well over a decade. Uh, we have a lot of aspirations. Uh, other commissioners around the country look at the laws that we have in New Hampshire and the rules that we have in New Hampshire, and they're jealous because our laws really enable a lot of flexibility. <clears throat> Sorry, I lose my voice here. It is the cold season. <laughs> um, but uh, we have a lot of flexibility in the system. So Learn Everywhere is really a program that allows us to capture student learning wherever and whenever it takes place. You know, we have to move beyond kind of, and this is a little bit of stepping outside of our comfort zone, uh, believing that somehow education exists between 7.30 and 2.30 inside a building. You know, students are learning all over our communities all the time and so is there a way we can harness that and bring that into the system and make it count towards something the the research is really definitive on this students who are engaged in their learning do better the learning is deeper it's more complete students who are engaged in their learning tend not to get into trouble right they're busy they're focused on the stuff that they're learning and so they're able to move forward uh, there's a gentleman Elliot Wasser who wrote a book called leaving to learn and it's really how do we create an environment that lets our students um, get outside of the walls of the, build, of the school, get outside of the classroom, and really learn opportunities. And there's really kind of an equity component to this. Uh, we all know that in education, for the last 40 years, there's what's referred to as an equity gap, which basically means that students that come from disadvantaged environments, they perform lower on our achievement tests than other students. And one of the things that turns that around for students is, again, the engagement. And they get engaged when they're working on in an environment and on a topic, you know, and in a way that they're interested in it. You know, they're excited about the learning and they're helping to move that forward. You've also been working on a family engagement program. Uh, this is something that some people might think of as kind of a no-brainer. Gosh, get involved in your kid's life or involved mm -hmm. in the education. But here we are. It's 2018 and we have to make sure the parents are involved. What's going on with this program to ensure that family engagement is there too? So we do have what's referred to as the, we created something called the Center for Family Voice. Uh, and essentially that is to engage families in education here in New Hampshire 
future. Um, it's interesting, after we came out with that program, I don't know if they knocked it off or not, but the federal government came out with a program about the Center for Family Voice, and they're like, we already did that here. Um, and part of the reason why we did that Center for Family Voice is we're trying to move a system forward in the 21st century. And part of moving the system forward means that you have to have everybody involved. And it's interesting in education, everyone's an expert, because everyone went to school, so they know exactly how it should work for them. And so the Center for Family Voice is to help the community and families also recognize the, uh, the importance of moving forward and some of the options for moving forward. You know, and another important aspect of helping to move the system forward is our educators. And so we have invested significantly alongside our Family Voice project in something called Universal Design for Learning, which equips our teachers to work in a personalized learning environment. Um, many of our educators went through a, a teacher preparation program that may have been what's referred to as kind of stand and deliver model, right? Well, I gave them the information, some kids got it, some kids didn't, right? And we know that that leaves a lot of kids behind. It creates some of that equity, uh, the gap that we talk about. And so really, a universal design for learning is helping equip teachers to be able to personalize learning opportunities for every single student. And so we are investing, again, in our families and in our communities to move the system forward. We're investing in our educators, and then we're coming up with creative programs like a Learn Everywhere program that really allows us to capture all student learning everywhere that it takes place. A lot of great teachers in the state, but you guys have seen an uptick in uh, teacher misconduct investigations. I think as of November of this year, we're up from about 170 in 2014 to more than 200 as of early November. What's driving those numbers? Do you know? Well, I think what's happening is that, it, well, first of all, you know that we had a big change this year. We came out with a code of ethics and a code of conduct for educators. And I think this really helps elevate the profession, right? So the, the profession itself drew a line in the sand and says, no, there are certain ethical standards by which we want to commit to the community that we will live by. Um, and so I am encouraged every day when I see educators who embrace that and say, like, we are a profession that keeps our students at the center and believes in kind of this, uh, you know, this code of ethics in terms of how we approach our vocation. Um, in terms of the numbers that are increasing, that could just be the environment that we're living in. I don't know what that is, um, but I'm proud of the teachers who every day are on the front lines kind of working for students, and we want to make sure that we don't let, you know, allow a few examples on the, on the periphery kind of taint who, who the educators are really as a core group. Yeah. Give us an update on Kino Garden. $11 million just went out the door a couple months ago. Are we seeing more communities add, or are we kind of hitting a plateau? So, great question for Charlie, who uh, is over at the lottery, and he runs Kino, uh, but certainly there is Kino coming in, and and then that funding, uh, under the current law anyways, will go to the uh, to fund kindergarten this year. Um, in, the, in the initial year, we basically just had the fixed amount of $1,100 per student uh, towards those full day kindergarten programs, and Kino will kick in this year, and so I'm sure right. that there will be more funding but headed do we, towards Do you that. think we're gonna see more communities, though, adding kin, uh, kindergarten, like Concord we're, did? We're almost up to 100%, right. so I think uh, you'll see that many communities have responded to that. How serious of a problem are we facing right now with uh, lead contamination? in school drinking water. Yeah, so it's interesting. I made an application to DES, Department of Environmental Services, just recently to get uh, $1.6 million to help remediate that. Uh, we also made another federal grant application in order to be able to help the schools test for lead. Honestly, I hope that I don't have to use any of that money uh, because you know, it is the job of the schools to keep kids safe, right? And so this is an opportunity uh, to help those schools, but I hope that they're already testing, I hope that they're already remediating, and that we don't have those kinds of problems in our schools. One of the biggest question marks moving forward is, do we have an education system that's competitive globally? That is, you know, against China, against some of these European countries. We know that they have things like year-round school there. So are we winning the arms race, in your opinion, for, for the, uh, you know, the future, which is the, you know, those young minds? So we are a leader in education, and historically, New Hampshire has been a leader in education, particularly in the U.S. Um, we have not implemented some of the things that we talked about, which is where kind of a Learn Everywhere program fits in. Uh, in terms of really creating those flexible opportunities to make sure that every student gets ahead in terms of where they're going to come out. Uh, there are more things that we can do to try and continue to advance our competitive position in the marketplace. Uh, but it's important that we give kids uh, the capacity that they, they need in order to be successful. Um, and that is one of the things that I think I'm very focused on. Okay. Commissioner of Education, Frank Edelblue, thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Adam. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you as well. And